Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the Honoring Women's Rights Conference on September 8th, 2012 at the Steinbeck Center in Salinas, California. We're also going to speak with two women right now mm -hmm. named Cecilia Barajas and Natasha Lasky. They are a mother and daughter. Mm -hmm. So, Natasha, what do your friends think? And how do you talk to your mother about being a feminist? I know your mother is a feminist and mm -hmm. um, so talk to us. Um, well, I personally consider myself a feminist, and um, I know my mom is definitely, and we definitely have a lot of conversations about that. Um, women's rights aren't really discussed with m me and my friends, and my friends really don't want to use the word feminist. Like, a, even if they agree with feminist ideals, they don't want to use the word. Even in today's hotbed of war on women, and do, 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 do girls in your school you're in high school or junior high? Um, high, high school. High school. Okay. So the girls in your high school, they talk about the war on women. Does it mean anything to them? Is it kind of crazy? Um, they really don't really know that much about, um, like, they kind of assume that everything is equal because okay. they haven't really had that education. Right. But well, it is supposed to be equal. Yeah, but, I mean, there's still so much inequality. Right. So let's bring up the first slide. Okay. This one was written in, uh, by the Susan B. Anthony Friends in 1894. No self-respecting woman should wish or work for success of a party that ignores her sex. Mm -hmm. This is an amazing slide. This, this poster that they, you know, that they wrote on, on a piece of material, mm -hmm. and they gathered together in, in the 1800s. This is before World War I. And I think they thought people thought they were crazy. They didn't, of course. They could see the future. <laughs> they, were, they were visionaries. So as a mother, Cecilia, do you talk to your daughter about Susan B. Anthony? Well, I don't, I don't think we talk about Susan B. Anthony per se, because her name, while is you know, it's studied in elementary schools as part of probably the, the American core curriculum, one of the few women that get, make it into the history books, I think we talk more about feminism from a contemporary standpoint, from like mm -hmm. the power of sexuality and in middle school, for example, with the short shorts, to... What do you um, mean short shorts? Well, I, you know, I was just at a debate where one girl was talking about how she should be able to wear incredibly short shorts and it was against the dress code in the public school that they're mm -hmm. thinking about implementing. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about why do adolescents wear what people would consider provocative or, you know, clothing and how it's part of the arsenal for women. You know, at least I think it, it's one of the few areas of power that have traditionally been used by women to have power and how sometimes that becomes prioritized over other values that women bring, mm -hmm. as, such as intellect, and the, sort of the tension between those two. You're right. I think that is a real tension. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an, another slide, and this is a, a real-life Rosie the Riveter in 1943 during World War II, and uh, she's a black woman living in Tennessee, or working in Tennessee, anyway. And do you know about the Rosie the Riveter story? Uh, Natasha? Um, well, I do. Well, I'm aware of like the poster and all of the kind of mythology surrounding it. I don't know all that much about the actual history surrounding it. Although, event. let me ask you this because mm -hmm. they do a very interesting project in their school, which is called the Decades Project, mm -hmm. where each, each group in the history class takes on a decade. Yeah. When they took on the 40s in World War II, did they discuss the, um, the impact on women of, of the various wars? Yeah, well, they did discuss um, how women were able to get jobs and go off to work. They didn't really discuss the dark underbelly of that, where when once all of the men returned, they were forced to quit their jobs and go back to, uh, um, like, mending the house and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of impact do you think it had on those women? Well, I mean, to Can have a job and then, I mean, I can't even imagine, but it must have been really um, hard for the women to completely make that transition back after finally getting, being able to work. Although one could argue, what an incredible gift, what a silver lining to this terrible war. Mm -hmm. It was that women first tasted this power. And even if you're watching shows like Downton Abbey, which are talking about different a different side of the coin, where women who, uh, who have of means are suddenly tasting the value that you, ha in the sense of accomplishment of being in the workplace. So w I don't, I haven't studied the intellectual history of this, but after war the World War II, when women had to go back into the 50s little, 
you know, domestic sphere, maybe that effect never ended, and maybe the ripple effect was the birth, the reemergence with of the women's movement in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. with, that, with the book of the feminine mystique. Yes. Because these women were depressed. Yeah. And that's yeah. what the feminine mystique brought out. Yeah. It seems interesting how the government and uh, the big businesses were in collusion, it seems to me. You know. yeah. so we're going to bring up one more slide. Uh, it's a cartoon. It's a modern-day cartoon. It's a political discussion mm -hmm. of uh, Uncle Sam and the Statue of Liberty, right, male and female. The, the Uncle Sam says, we can't pay teachers. We can't pay social workers or nurses or child care providers. And she says, just say it. You just can't pay women. Because right, those are all women's jobs, as caretakers and children care. So that's today. This was a cartoon that I saw in the paper two months ago. Wow. So, you know, in, in, during all the heat of this war on women and all the, this political justification of, like, well, you know, you're with us because we don't want to pay for our birth control, or no, you're with us because we believe that uh, gay people can get married, right? So it's just, it's just ridiculous for me. But the under I think underneath everything is this inequity in pay still, mm -hmm. you know, and it stems from w way worse than that. Not, not you don't get the same pay, you don't get the job. Wow. Yeah. When I was a teen, when I was your age, mm -hmm. do you remember this? Men's work, female, you know, there's women's job listings and men's job listing. It was really depressing. Yeah. You can't get a job. I mean, I, although I think times are changing, and I think to some degree on that cartoon is, I mean, women women constitute way more than nursing and teaching, although those may be predominantly female careers. Mm -hmm. Women are entering and have in other fields like law and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. various medicine mm -hmm. and engineering. Yeah, uh, that's true. And in your class, one Definitely. of the things that's just profoundly amazing to me is all, almost all of her friends at, are, would classify themselves as math sciences. And I don't know if it's a response to the economy, mm -hmm. and people view that as a safe harbor, mm -hmm. but wouldn't you, wouldn't you say that? Definitely, and I think a lot of my friends do have really like huge career ambition, and they don't really realize that there's still so much inequality in pay and in getting jobs. And, and rising through the ranks. So we'll see what happens when you leave high school, when you go through college, and then when you go into the workplace. When yeah. I was in college, I have a degree, I have a couple degrees in physics, you have a degree in law, when I was in college, I was one of the only women in my class. I'd sit up in the front. I, if there wasn't any other women, I never knew it because mm -hmm. they sat in the back and were quiet. Uh, so I don't believe they're there because they didn't speak up. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in work, you know, it, it was, it's difficult. It's just difficult to be the first. And hopefully when you get there, it's not going to be like that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, you know, I'm hoping.